This is part 25 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss different ways of defining functions in JavaScript. One of the ways to define a function is by using function declaration syntax. This is the standard and most common way of defining functions in JavaScript. Here, we have two examples of defining a function using function declaration syntax. In the first example, notice that we are defining the function first and then we are calling the function. So here we have add numbers function to which we are passing two parameters, first number, second number. We are adding them together. The sum is stored in this result variable and finally we are returning that result variable. Here we are calling the function, passing 10 and 20 as the values for first number and second number parameters respectively. We are storing the return value of that function in the sum variable and finally writing the value in the sum variable to the document object. So in this example, we are defining the function first and then we are calling the function. In this example, notice that we are making a call to add numbers function before its definition. So a call to the function is present before it is defined. So let's see if these two examples are going to work the same way. So here we have this add numbers function defined first and then we are calling the function. We are passing 10 and 20 as the values for the parameters. So when we run this we expect 30 to be printed. Now let's move the call to add numbers function to the top of the page. So here we have the function call present before the function definition. So is this still going to work the same way? Let's look at that. Notice that it still works as expected. So how is it working? We have the function definition after the function call. So the function call is present before the function definition. So how is it working? It's working because in JavaScript there's a concept called function hoisting. What is meant by function hoisting? At runtime, by default, JavaScript moves all the function declarations to the top of the current scope. That means at runtime, this piece of code where we have the function defined, this will be automatically moved to the top of the page. So by the time this line is executed, it already knows about this add numbers function. So it works as expected. So that's called function hoisting. And because of function hoisting, JavaScript functions can be called before they are defined. So in both of these two examples, we are defining a function using the standard function declaration syntax. Another way to define a function in JavaScript is by using a function expression. A function expression allows us to define a function using an expression, typically by assigning a function to a variable. There are three different ways of defining a function using a function expression. Here we have an example for anonymous function expression. So let's look at this in action. So here we have this add numbers function. So this is called as named function. That's because this function has got a name that is add numbers. I'm going to remove the name. So this is anonymous function. What is anonymous function? Anonymous function is function that does not have any name. And I'm going to assign this anonymous function to a variable. Let's assign this function to this variable add. So this line is an expression and this function is an anonymous function. So this all together is called as anonymous function expression. And to call this function, we have to use this variable add. So here I'm going to type add and notice that the moment I open parentheses, the IntelliSense shows the parameters that this method expects first number, second number. Let's pass 10 and 20. Run this and we expect 30 to be printed. There we go. Functions defined using a function expression are not hoisted. What does that mean? That means if we move the call to this function to the top of the page, is this going to work? So here we are creating a function using a function expression. And we are calling this function before it is defined. So here we have the call to this function and we are defining the function here. Okay, so let's throw in a breakpoint here and run this in debug mode. 
and notice that when I have the mouse over it says add is undefined so functions defined using a function expression are not hoisted that means function defined using a function expression can only be called after it has been defined but remember a function that is defined using a standard function declaration can be called both before and after it is defined here we have an example for named function expression so let's look at this in action so let's create a function to compute the factorial of a number so function and let's name this method compute factorial and to this let's pass a parameter number if the provided number is less than or equal to 1 so factorial of any number that is less than or equal to 1 is 1 so we are simply going to return 1 if the number is greater than 1 that's when we need to compute the factorial so in that case we are going to return number multiplied by calling the same method that is compute factorial method and then subtracting 1 every time from the number so this is a very simple program to compute the factorial of a given number now notice this function is just like any other function that we create using the standard function declaration syntax and this is a named function because this function has got a name now I'm going to assign this function to a variable so let's create a variable called factorial so this line is an expression because we are assigning a function to a variable and this function is a named function so altogether this is a named function expression okay now look at this this function has got a name that is compute factorial now to invoke this function can't I just use that name compute factorial let's look at that in action so let's call compute factorial and let's say we want to compute the factorial for number five and whatever result it returns let's store it in a variable let's name it result and then let's write the value of that variable to the document object and let's throw in a breakpoint here run this and see what's gonna happen notice that it says compute factorial is undefined so what does this mean so here we are defining a function using named function expression and this name that is compute factorial this name will be available only inside this function look at this we are calling compute factorial inside the method with the same name but to refer to this function outside of that function you cannot use that name if you want to call this function outside of this function you have to use this variable factorial let's use that name factorial and let's run this factorial of 5 is 120 so it should print 120 there we go so here we are creating a function using named function expression the name of the function that is compute factorial is available only within the same function if we try to use that name outside of this function we get that undefined error and this syntax is useful for creating recursive function so what is a recursive function a recursive function is a function that calls itself notice that here compute factorial is calling itself so we are using this named function expression syntax basically to create this recursive function so here we have an example for self invoking function expression so let's look at this in action so here what I'm going to do is wrap this entire code you know from here to here in a bracket and then inside that parenthesis what I'm going to do is look at this the moment I open after this closing curly brace the moment I open a parenthesis look at that it says compute factorial the intelligence shows that it expects number parameter so let's say we want to compute factorial for 5 and then I'm closing the bracket so we are passing a value for this number parameter okay so what's going to happen is when we run this this piece of code will be executed 
okay and whatever result this code returns that will be stored in this variable so let's actually rename the um, variable to result and then let's write the value that is present in that variable to the document object so when we run this this code will be automatically invoked and the ret uh, result will be stored in this variable and we are writing its value to the document so when we run this we should get a value of 120 printed there we go so this is an example for self invoking function expression and the self invoking function expressions have got different names so they are called immediately invoked function expression because they are executed immediately when we run it we don't have to call it explicitly it's also called a self executing anonymous function or self invoked anonymous function thank you for listening and have a great day